to Ohio Republican Congressman Bill Johnson joining me now to discuss this. Congressman, if, in fact, the administration tries to do this and, and there, are, there are clear indications that it's unconstitutional, the Constitution says you have to have both both houses of Congress pass a bill before you can have this kind of spending. But if they go ahead and do with it, do it anyway, will you try to stop it legally? Absolutely. And I think it'll be up to Republicans uh, in the House and the Senate uh, to mount that challenge, to make sure the American people know what's going on, trying to pull the wool over their eyes. And I think it'll be up to the states, uh, attorneys general all across the nation, for example, like the ones who have gone after the vaccine mandates. Now, it, it, it begs the question, what is going on here with the administration? We have a president who, when he was campaigning, said he was going to he was going to go right down the middle. He was going to bring people together. He's done anything but that veered far to the left, uh, leaving at least half, if not more of the of the voting public behind. How, what's happening is is the progressive left calling all the shots with this White House? Well, it appears so. It appears so. Clearly, uh, the Biden administration has tried to jam through this massive uh, social reengineering legislation called Build Back Better. It's not going to build back better. Uh, it's going to make everything more expensive from gasoline at the pump to, uh, uh, to groceries at the food store. Uh, but, but he's done so with very razor thin margins in both the House and the Senate. And if you remember, uh, Nancy Pelosi, it took her weeks and weeks to get enough votes to try and even pass it in the House because she couldn't get her own party on board. And we've got Democrats, uh, Joe Manchin and others in the Senate that are expressing grave concerns about this, uh, this idea of marching America towards socialism. So uh, clearly, uh, they are uh, they are off track with what they promised during the campaign. And Congressman, it's it's more than just the BBB plan. I mean, there's so many issues on which this administration has put forth, for example, nominees uh, who essentially want to undo our free market economy. We had the the, the famous uh, Omarosa, the, the the nominee for the controller of the currency, and and she wanted to essentially nationalize private capital in America. I mean, she she this is not just kind of the the mild Bernie Sanders uh, democratic socialism. This is hardcore Marxism. No, this is Bernie Sanders on steroids. You're exactly right. This is Marxism, and I mean, if you look at what has happened at the end of at the end of 2020. We still, in spite of the uh, pandemic, we had the best economy that we had in 50 years, the highest wages, the lowest taxes, the best national security. Our borders were secure. We were energy independent for the first time in 70 years. And it has taken just less than a year, less than nine months for this administration to dismantle the greatest economy that America has had since uh, since Ronald Reagan. Uh, it's 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 an absolute disaster. Congressman, we've only got about 30 seconds for you for this uh, very complex question. But you were in the military for 26 years. Thank you for your service. Uh, you left as a, as a lieutenant colonel. There seems to be a, a crisis in confidence in the military, mainly because of what happened in Afghanistan. How do we address that? Well, I tell you, that, that is a big concern of mine. Uh, as you mentioned, I served for nearly 27 years. And, and special thanks go out today for all of our men and women in uniform that are, uh, that are serving to keep us free and safe all across the globe today over the holidays. But I tell you, we need generals that will stand up and be generals and look out for the military and look out for our war fighters instead of concentrating on being woke and, and, and uh, uh, being diverse and inclusive. I served in a military that was, that was extremely diverse, and, uh, and I yep. never experienced the problems that they say they're trying right. to fix today. It's got, well, we've, we've got a bigger problem that needs to be addressed, and that's the confidence of the military itself. Congressman, great to see you. Have a wonderful new year. Thank you very much for being here.